So now that we've finished our evaluation and harvest and whatnot, and we've entered our data, we need to do some data analysis. And that's what I'm going to cover here. Uh, so this is my original sheet here that I have on the screen. This is just where I collected the data and everything. And it's got a bunch of different stuff here. So what I've done is I've created two new tabs down at the bottom here in order to uh, simplify that data. So I just have what I need to make some charts and do some analysis. And this is just very basic analysis I'm doing, and I'll cover a little bit about uh, how I've done this. Uh, so what I've done is I've got my, uh, we'll look at sunflower here. We have two reps, and I'm actually just, just doing these separately, uh, so they're independent. And then they're the key things we're looking at is our, we're trying to compare our sowing rate to different metrics. So with sunflower, we have disease, germination, vigor, and weight. And I think I may not have done all of these. Let's just see here. Yeah, I didn't do one for disease. I just because, and the reason I didn't do that is because I'm not seeing a strong correlation. So I'll talk about that here. So the general idea behind statistical analysis is to look at as this thing changes, how does it relate to how this thing changes? Now let's look at sowing rate versus weight, for example. We might expect as our sowing rate goes up, our weight goes up. And so there would be a strong correlation there. So let's take a look at the, this first chart right here on the right. This is our harvest weight versus our sowing rate. You can see each of these plots, our, our sowing rate is at the bottom here in grams of seed per cell, and our evaluation weight is here. And this is in grams. So you can see we're kind of all over the place. We're not seeing a steady climb, even though our trend line, which goes across here, uh, does show an increase. And as I mentioned in our hypothesis, what we were expecting was for our harvest weight to increase and then decrease in a curve something like that. Um, almost like this one here. You see an increase and then a decrease and then it goes back up again. But that's clearly not linked. So the thing we're looking for here, though, in, in basic statistical analysis is this R value. So uh, this is basically between 0 uh, and 100 percent or 0 and 1 uh, written as a decimal. And you can see uh, our R squared value here is 0.112. So this is a very low R squared value, which means there's very little correlation here, which means this does not show a relationship between uh, sowing rate and harvest rate. Same thing in rep two. There is no, we're not seeing any relationship here. We're seeing data all over the place. Um, this might change if I took out uh, these last three points. Um, but there's just not a strong relationship, 0.04, it's very, very low. Whereas one would be a perfect relationship. Every line is right, every dot is right on the trend line. So in terms of weight and sewing rate, we're not seeing a relationship there. So the, the, the research hasn't been conclusive. I'm just gonna scroll over to the right and look at vigor rating. So vigor rating was like a one to five scale of how much vigor, how much good growth are we seeing when we uncovered the tray after germination. You can see again in both of these, all over the place and really low R values, 0 0.03 and 0 0.018, so, so quite low. And then we're gonna move here and we're gonna look at germination rating and same thing. We see uh, some consistency, but no pattern. And we actually see it going down in this one, down in this one, but a very low R value. This one's a little higher, but these R values are basically showing no relationship between sowing rate and germination rate, vigor, and, and, and weight. Now, so I could go, okay, well, the, clearly all my hypotheses were wrong and uh, there's no relationship and it's completely random. Or what we can do is go, eh, maybe our methodology wasn't very sound. So let's do that again. And I'm going to go with option two because uh, after some analysis, I could see that our uh, methodology was a bit flawed. And so doing it in a different way might give us more consistent results. So I'm just going to sk skip over to wheatgrass quickly here. And we see something similar, you know, so when we look at, um, got all our data here, when we look here at sowing rate and height, once again, our sowing rate is going up, but our height is remaining pretty consistent. So our R squared is 0 0.028, 0 0.053, extremely, extremely low values. Um, here though, when we look at sowing rates versus yield, we do see a relationship. 
Uh, here the R value is uh, 0.49, uh, but here it's 0.791, and this one's you know close to 80%. So this is getting uh, something reasonable, and we see a, a steady increase here. And once again, we were expecting um, it to climb and then drop, but we didn't see that. And this again, I think, is a function of soil depth. Because the soil depth wasn't a limiting factor, we could can increase our seeding rate and, and get an increased yield. We also see some like this 12.4 here, which is our known sowing rate already. This is a bit of an anomaly here. So um, I think we see in, in cell packs with deep soil, there's a, there's a long way of increasing your yield uh, with uh, increased sowing rates. So this might speak to actually deeper soil with wheatgrass allows you to get more yield per tray area uh, if you use a deeper tray and significantly more from looking at this. Once again, I think there's some flaws in the methodology, but if we look at soil depth as a function of um, yield, this could be um, useful. So this isn't super conclusive either, and because I wasn't getting very good R values in these, I've, I've, I haven't done a lot of analysis here because my initial analysis suggests that the methodology was flawed, which I dis discussed in my last video, and which we um, I'm going to do revisions for in the trials, which I will actually start again today, which is May 20th, 21st maybe? I think it's the 20th today. So I'm just going to quickly show you how uh, I, I made some of these graphs if you're not familiar, and I won't go into great detail here, but um, what we're doing, uh, to make a, a graph, you're going to use the chart feature in, um, in uh, Google Sheets here. It's right here. So in order to do this, you need to select your data. So, and you're basically selecting what's going to go on your x-axis, which is this one down here. And this is your independent variable. variable. It means your sowing rate isn't dependent on other things. Like sowing rate doesn't change with height. Height changes with sowing rate, theoretically. Um, usually when we look at something like an independent variable, it's, it's the variable that isn't affected by other things. So a really good example of this is time. Time is almost always an independent variable um, because it's like, this is how many days we did this and this is what kind of yield we got. Days of growth affects yield Yield does not affect days of growth. Yield in a crop does not affect time. So you've always got an independent variable and a dependent variable. The independent variable here is on your x-axis. The dependent variable is on your y-axis. And what that means is, how does this change relative to this? That's what we're looking at. That's the basic idea. So if I want to look at cell sowing rate versus height, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these here. And I'm selecting the titles as well. And sometimes uh, uh, Google puts them in automatically and sometimes they don't. I'm going to go to Insert. I'm going to go to Chart. And then it's going to come up here. And some of it's auto-filled already. It's, it says Line Chart here, and that's exactly what I'm going to use. So you can see there's a basic um, uh, thing there. I'm using Column C as labels, but for some reason the labels aren't showing up. And I'm going to put aggregate here because it just breaks this down into uh, each of the individual sowing rates. Then I'm going to go over to Customize. Um, here you can put in your title. So I'm just going to go to Chart Title and I'm just going to call this Sample Title because I've already done all this stuff. Then I'm going to go to my Horizontal Axis, which is my x-axis here. And I'm just going to put in here Sowing Rate. You see it appears there. And then my vertical axis title here is uh, height. And usually what you do is you put your, um, and I'll go back to do it for sowing rate, is you put your units here. Uh, and this is grams of seed per cell. So these are just sort of conventions with um, charts. For your own use, you don't necessarily need to do it. But when you look at a chart, you want to know what it means. So your title tells you what, what's going on. Maybe I'll be more specific here. Sorry about that. We're going to call this sowing rate um, and its effect on crop height. So it's very descriptive. Effect, effect. I always get those two mixed up. It doesn't matter. Um, uh, I think it's an E. <laughs> it doesn't matter, but I'm going to change it anyways. Um, 
Okay, so we're looking at sewing rate and its effect on height. As sewing rate changes, how does height change? You can see height is pretty consistent, so it doesn't change. So what we're going to do is now go down to Series, and we're going to select Error Bar. So this just gives you, and it's a value, it's like here's what 10% variation looks like here. And then we're going to do a trend line. So this is a way of, what it's doing actually is creating an equation for um, what the trend looks like with um, uh, this, these uh, data. And then we're going to sh do show R squared. And really it's the R squared value we're looking for. It's the most important thing here. If it's low, uh, which is say less than uh, 0 0.6, 60% or lower, um, I, I consider it really non-conclusive. And if it's higher than that, um, between zero and one, um, so say six and up, uh, it shows uh, more correlation or more relationship. And so that's what we're really looking for. So that's really the basics. You can change things. So for example, on the vertical axis, I can switch my minimum value to 15. Uh, and that just, um, that just, uh, I don't mean to insult that. that just sort of makes the, the chart a little more uh, simple here. So it's just a really basic look at, at how to do very basic um, uh, charting and analysis, but really what we're looking for is the relationship between our independent variable and our dependent variable, and in each of these our independent variable was our sewing rate. In the next series of trials I do, the independent variable is going to be soak time, and how does soak time affect height and, and things like that in germination. So uh, every uh, every experiment we do is like, how does this influence that? How does soak time, temperature, seeding rate, influence height, weight, disease? That's the approach we're taking. Okay, so I'm just going to delete this here. Um, okay, so once again, you can you can link to this spreadsheet uh, in the uh, in the uh, description panel. You can take a look at this and the sewing methodology. Uh, I've updated the methodology based on this first round of research, uh, which has produced inconclusive results due to uh, poor correlation in data, and in some cases with the wheatgrass has disproven our theory, uh, which basically I thought uh, I stated that uh, yield would increase and then decrease at a certain um, at a certain sowing rate, that didn't happen, but the next round of research of trials I do will be in shallower trays, which represent better represent how they will actually be grown, and so I would look to see a difference in this. So we'll revisit that in round two of the sowing rates trials, but this is just a quick look at, at how we do data analysis and what the results of this trial look like. In short, the results were unconclusive or inconclusive, which is a diplomatic way of saying the experiment failed, um, but that's not really true either because we don't ever consider or rarely consider experiments failed. In this case, I think it was faulty methodology. Uh, the methodology has been revised, and so we'll do another round of these trials and, and see what we get in the shallower tray. So that brings round one of our experiment series uh, to a close. I'm going to do another uh, round of sowing rates for both uh, sunflower and wheatgrass. I won't do as many videos, I'll just summarize, uh, do a few notes along the way, uh, and then do a data analysis there to hopefully get something a little more conclusive. So once I've done a second round of this, we'll move on to looking at soak time and how that affects uh, growth in both wheatgrass and sunflower as well.